Hi, my name is Chila, Chila Ben. Uh, we are here in Paris at the TSO 30th uh, uh, Annual Conference. And uh, I'm just uh, listening to Roy Bicknell, who is teaching business English in Amsterdam. And he gave, he gave us a lecture, a very thoughtful lecture, an inspiring lecture about how to raise awareness in our business English classes. So, Roy. Uh, uh, hi, Chila. Hi, hi, Roy. Uh, nice to meet you here. Could you yeah. just sum up in a few words what you talked about and how you see how we can raise awareness in our mm -hmm. sessions as business and teachers? Well, the, the world that we're in, our, our students are in, is becoming very complex. Uh, their, their level of, uh, their proficiency level is going up, their fluency is going up and the classroom situation itself is becoming very complex. If you want to engage the students more, it's become a much more challenging task for the teacher. If you want to engage them more, reflection is one way to do it, to somehow try and increase their awareness of why they are there, what they are learning, and how they are as learners, that that also has an impact on what they are doing in the learning situation. So you could say in a nutshell, that's what the workshop is learning is about. The different strategies that could be used to introduce a more explicit reflective element in the teaching and in the learning. I see. What are the major challenges you see in business English teaching? Uh, mixed abilities mm -hmm. of the students. Um, uh, sometimes good perception but also misperception on what they actually need and actually the quick fix idea I want a quick payoff um, I'm busy uh, this course is expensive and I want to be fluent tomorrow I see uh, what are you doing right now what is your research concern well, not so much research, it's really more research in, in, in practice. So I've been writing about, about this and giving workshops like the one this morning. Uh, but I've been trying, I've been experimenting in session and I say that up front to the students. This is an experiment. You are the guinea pigs uh, because perhaps you can also learn from this. Uh, and I've been working on, the, yeah, make the, the reflective element a bit more concrete that they really think in a concrete way about the learning goals. So actually what I've been trying to do is put them in the driving seat as well. So we actually engage teacher and student more as peers and not the teacher ex cathedra like listen and this is what you have to do. So that means that what you're doing has to be much more flexible, you have to let go of some of the structure of what you're perhaps used to. You, you take more risks, but can actually be very, very productive and fruitful for the students as well. We were talking about risk taking, yeah. and we had a bit of a difference in that, in terms of cultural background. Certain cultures are more risk takers in language learning than in general than other cultures. More adventurous. More adventurous. So you teach in Holland. Yeah. And uh, what do you think about the Dutch learners in terms of risk taking? That's actually a good, a, well, it's a good question. Um, they are they, they're very methodical, but at the same time, they like adventure and risk. So you can actually um, you can actually raise the bar with them. In France, it would probably be a little bit more difficult. But I think the principle in general is it's very important for students nowadays to pull down the walls of the classroom and think they are their real actors in the business world. So they're there le learning English, but there are more challenges as well. So they really have to become more aware of why they want something and is what they're learning the right kind of thing and if they're not comfortable with the learning task why and i think in a, in a, in a broader picture or a bigger picture that can be very relevant especially if you look at a very complex world and that's actually one of my concerns as an educator we live in a very complex world and how can our students and ourselves 
face this challenge, for example, in Europe, which is actually crumbling at this very moment. Absolutely, absolutely. And how do you see the role of, uh, of the teacher in this risk-taking? Is he a facilitator, or does he give feedback? In part, a guide feedback, as well, but actually also one of the players. I think you have to show that, as a, as a teacher, that you're vulnerable and also exploring along with them. You, it's almost like, how many doors can we open? I see. Well, thank you very much. It was nice talking to you. I appreciate your time. And uh, I just love your questions. <laughs>